welcome to this Stravenspear quick walkthrough video. My name is Zach. I'm the CEO of Blockgen, the company that owns and develops the Stravenspear platform. Today in this walkthrough, I'll be going through creating a scheduler, connecting your workers, and adding a rental for your customer. Let's go ahead and log in. Once logged into your Stravenspear account, you'll be presented with this list of hash schedulers. As we can see, we have no hash schedulers available on this account, so let's go ahead and create a new one. Click the new scheduler up here in the top left. We'll see we have various settings for your new scheduler. So the algorithm, we use SHA-256 for Bitcoin. We're going to select miner to miner, essentially meaning the failover method is going to be one for one swap of miners or workers. Uh, let's name the scheduler Echo. The worker limit, we're going to put 200, meaning we can connect up to 200 workers to this based on our account subscription. And then we have this allowed worker deviation. And this essentially means that if the recorded baseline for the worker goes more than 20% out of range, then the worker would could be considered degraded and would be failed over. And then the location, we're just going to select US Central. Let's click Continue. We'll see here we have the settings for our personal pool. Personal pool is where your miners will be mining when they're either not rented or a failover occurs and the degraded miner is put back uh, into your inventory and not allocated to the customer. So let's go ahead and uh, use F2 pool. We'll set our account. These settings we can leave default. And then we're going to go to a secondary pool. I'm going to use AMP pool. And we're going to go ahead and click launch scheduler. You can see the scheduler was created successfully. Now you have to wait a few minutes and it'll go from not responding to initializing and then to a healthy status. Once it gets healthy, then we can start connecting miners. You can see after a few moments, the scheduler has gone to a healthy status. So let's go ahead and click on it. You can see here, it's telling us there's no connections. If we click on the workers page. We can also see that we don't have any workers pointed to this scheduler yet. In order to use the scheduler, you have to connect your workers or mining rigs to it. So let's go ahead and go back to the overview. You can see here we have worker connections details. Here on this page, you will find your primary and secondary stratum connections that you'll plug into your Bitcoin miner. Now we're going to connect our Bitcoin miner or worker as we like to call it on stratum sphere to our newly created scheduler. So let's go ahead and grab the worker connection details from our newly created scheduler and paste them into the URL section basic miner. Now let's name our worker something that's easy to remember or identify within our facility. So we'll name it S9 P801. Password would be X. We'll hit save and apply. Our worker should start connecting to Stratosphere shortly. A few moments after connecting our worker to Stratosphere, we can click on the scheduler see it's starting to be connected and it's being listed as new or baselining. If we go to the workers inventory page, we'll see it's right here baselining. This baselining will take approximately three hours on a default scheduler. So we're going to go and connect our other four Antminer S9s to the scheduler and we'll come back and show you how to add a rental. All right, it's been a little over three hours and our Five workers have finished baselining. As you can see here, all of them are healthy. And our current hash rate is 66.56 terahash. And uh, that's all pointing to our personal pool. So it's not allocated to customer, it's just mining for us personally. If you go to our workers inventory page, we can see you know, the worker names, their status, current hash rate, the baseline that was taken, where they're mining, etc. So let's go ahead and add a rental. So we click to add a rental and let's name our customer. Customer Joe is purchasing these two S9s from us exactly one month. So we will add an expiration date and we'll put one month. So on March 25th, this will expire. And let's add in the pool credentials. Customer Joe wants to mine two slush pool. Go down here and set a secondary for him. You requested that he mines on CK pool for secondary. Let's just double check everything, make sure we've put in what we wanted, and then click Add Rental. You can see the rental was created successfully, 
and the allocated workers and current hash rate numbers will not update until a share is successfully submitted on the customer's rental pool. So let's come back within the next 10, 15 minutes. All right, we can see that the stats have populated on the rental now. Uh, you can see, you know, the two uh, workers are allocated, the current hash rate and expires, et cetera. And we can click on customer Joe's rental for more detailed statistics. You can see um, the average hash rate of the rental when it was created, uh, accepted difficulty, rejected difficulty, et cetera. And we have a hash rate history chart here. We can actually zoom in on the chart as well to get a more detailed time frame or look for failures. This rental is high availability. So if one of the workers fails, then it will be replaced with a healthy worker. As you can see on this worker's inventory page, all of the workers are currently healthy. You can see that S9, 5, and 2 are currently mining to customer Joe's rental. If any of these go into a degraded status, then one of these three, one, four, or three S9s will automatically fail over and take the place on the rental and the customer will never see the outage. We can also see on the overview that we have updated statistics here. So you can see that about 43.5% of our total hash rate is currently being allocated to customer rentals. Here we are on a third party mining pool, slush pool, and you can see that the customer Joe rental is delivering actual valid shares straight through Stratosphere to the pool. So you can, if you click on the workers, we can see there's an you know, auto worker generated here. Let's click on the worker and you can see exactly when the rental was created. It started submitting shares and it's been going ever since. If your customer ever wants to change their rental or they want to get rid of it, it's simple. All you have to do is go to controls and you can update the rental, uh, change the workers, change the expiration date, change the pool settings, et cetera. And then for delete rentals, pretty self-explanatory. You just delete the rental and the workers would go back to mining on your personal mining pool. We understand that not all Stratosphere customers want to manually provision every single rental, especially if they have hundreds or thousands of different customers utilizing mining rigs in their facilities. The great thing about Stratosphere is you can utilize our API to create schedulers, list rental details, create rentals, et cetera. So you can actually use our platform in a co completely white label way. So you could integrate it to your app and then when the customer checks out, uh, pays you in Bitcoin, credit card, whatever you decide to do, um, it just creates the rental and it starts mining to their pool of choice. We support multiple languages in our documentation and try to make it as easy as possible for your developers. All right, that concludes the video. If you have any questions or problems, we suggest that you check the help center here on the left hand side. And if that doesn't work out for you, please do not hesitate to contact support we have several different methods, whether it's live chat, email, or text messaging. Uh, and we have been working with mining equipment and software between our team. We have over a decade of experience. So please do not hesitate to ask us any questions.